Hello everybody, Jackson here. Today I am showcasing my Zentech 9003 programmable terminal. So this is the most favorite terminal that I own. I haven't owned a ton, but you know, I know a lot about a lot of terminals and this one is just one of the most unique ones out there. It's fully programmable. It's got three logic boards and um, it's extremely, extremely rare. As far as I'm aware, this is the last one out there because if you look online, you will only see pictures and videos of this terminal, of mine. But, um, you know, there might be a couple other out there that are in someone's attic, forgotten about. And there's probably just a couple out there that people are just leaving in secret. But this is extremely rare because, you know, most other rare terminals that are, like, widely known as being rare. The Data General Dasher D1, you know, terminals like that. There's dozens out there that are still known i mean there's a ton but this one it's the only one so uh let's just start off with the tour of the terminal so it has a detachable keyboard now this keyboard is massive it weighs 11 pounds it's huge as you can see here it's made out of steel and it uses keytronic magnetic reed switches and these keycaps are so nice as you'll see they're so shiny they just look great they sound really nice. They're really smooth, you'll see here. They're probably my uh, most favorite switches that I've typed on. Uh, there's better ones out there, but I'd rate them above Hall Effect, Honeywell Hall Effect switches, which is pretty controversial, but they're just very nice. A lot of people say they're very stiff, and while they are, I'd say they're less stiff than Honeywell Hall Effect, and it just it sounds so nice. like. The space bar and everything everything just sounds really perfect. I really like it. And the all caps key right here clicks. But um, that's enough with the keyboard. Let's move on to the actual terminal. So I will move this keyboard aside just so we can get a full view of the terminal and the terminal itself. So it's got like a three foot long cord from outside, but... Uh, that's like where it goes underneath. Now the terminal is huge. It may look big on camera, but this is a 15 inch CRT display. It is massive and there's no burning on it, which is really nice. The terminal itself is in great condition. There's some little nicks on here, but I haven't really, I could clean all this up. I just haven't done a great job at it yet. But uh, yeah, here we got the Zentech Chrome and blue logo. And uh, you'll see the keyboard matches it you know everything's matching uh these keys right here they've yellowed a bit but they're supposed to match the tan here but you know i could fix that later on but around back we got some several options over here first zentech logo right there so that's the model number and the serial number zentech santa clara california so we got some options brightness contrast volume baud rate and these options right here and then yeah, an option for it to be hooked up to something. But I'm going to take the uh, cover off and show you the inside because I have done quite a bit of work on it. Got it mostly working, but as you'll see, mostly is not entirely working because, well, there's very limited information on this terminal online. And I think the problem is located within the ROMs. Because uh, this uses EPROMs, so if it gets exposed to sunlight, uh, whatever's on it will disappear. And obviously I can't get a new program on them because there's no other of these terminals that exist. So as far as I'm aware, you know, I just got to deal with what I've got. So I'll slide off this cover. All right, so the cover is removed. So here is the insides of the terminal. So we got the CRT right there and uh, power supplies under there. Here's all the actual logic boards in here. So right here is the character refresh board. In the middle is the processor board and then in the back is the RAM. So that's what we got right there. Now this was a completely customizable terminal i got in contact with someone who worked in the company which was 
pretty hard to do because the company was so small but he told me that this was a fully customizable terminal and this came out in 1976 it was the only one like that when it was out so if you wanted a fully customizable terminal this is where you went you went to Zentex so that's the inside pretty much there but I'll put the cover back on and I'll get it fired up and yeah we'll do that So there is the case back on, so I'll just screw it in place. These are the only two screws that hold on the case, so it is actually really convenient to work on. This whole terminal has been like pretty much a dream to work on because of how simple it is, but it's also very hard because of how limited the information online is. and. How sparse it is and this is just such an obscure terminal and this is what you have to deal with when collecting rare terminals like this you really just got to get familiar with terminals like this in general and go from there so I'll put the keyboard back down here so that's that and here's the power cord so it just goes right in there now the power switch is actually pretty big, it's right there, and it makes this very satisfying click. And that's the sound of it turning on. This is the first time I've fired it up in about a month, so it might take a couple seconds, but uh, this one actually fires up pretty quick compared to my other terminals, you'll see. It really doesn't take long. So there, we already got it started up. Now this is what I mean by it's pretty much fully working. So we got the cursor right there, it's just blinking, and if you hear that, it's registering the keyboard, every key works, but when I get to a function key, we get that, FK bad, I'm pretty sure that means function key bad, but there's nothing about it in the manual, so that's all I can go from here pretty much, I mean... I could do a lot more troubleshooting, but I don't really have the time, but this terminal is not going anywhere, so I'll work on it eventually. But you can see it doesn't really do anything else besides that. Now, when I first got it, it wasn't doing this actually. There was like problems all over, but I rearranged the RAM and got that working out. But this, this is what it does now. So. I say pretty much working, but, you know, it doesn't really do that much. But I think it's really just the ROMs. I don't know what the program is in here. So, because I don't know if I mentioned the app ROMs are custom. They're not original to this computer. Whoever owned this customized it and made it their own pretty much. But it does have a fan around back, as you can hear. Working fine. But, um... All the brightness knobs work and stuff like if i adjust the brightness up to max you'll see you know that works but um doesn't really do that much i'll get it figured out it's just such a unique terminal so i really like it and also if i didn't mention this thing is a beast as i did say 15 inch display but the keyboard itself is 12 pounds and the terminal is 90 so it is a massive terminal and it's heavy. It's built to last and uh, I'm just very happy with this terminal. I really like it. I'm just a big fan of these obscure, rare terminals. And uh, I really like the keyboards on here. I mean, they're just so cool. Definitely one of the best parts. I'll take a key off and show that's the switch. So it's Keytronic Magnetic Read, so if I took another key off, you'd probably be able to see the Spokane, maybe. Yeah, there you go. Keytronic, and then it says Spokane somewhere on there, but... Normally you see uh, Keytronic 
uh, foam and foil switches, but this is old enough 1976 to be magnetic reed, which are just super nice. They're so smooth. Incredibly smooth, the switches. And they are stiff, but not that stiff. So, yeah, that's the Zentec 9003 terminal.